Okay. Standard reduction potential tables and equilibrium constants. So what's the big to do? The big to do, I think, is all of the chemistry, all of the chemistry that's in these tables. There's a lot. I mean, if you know what's in your vat of material, and if you had a table like this, you could tell what's going to react, what's not going to react. You could tell to what degree things are going to react, just how vigorous and aggressive these reactions are going to be. So there's a, there's a lot of power. I mean, what's going to react first? What's going to react second? That's the kind of thing that allows you to prevent rust from happening, right? Let's put something on there that will react first. Okay. So, and we'll get to that in a little bit here. But just to let you know, rust is really two half reactions, right? So you have to add reactions up to get them to work. So notice the electrons are on the reactant side. You have to flip this one. Right, so the electrons would be on the product side. But it kind of makes sense if you flip it, because then you have iron solid going to iron plus two. So it's, yeah, the iron solid's disappearing. That's, that's rust. We are going to get equilibrium constants from cell voltages. OK. Now, let's answer this question first. Let's jump way down here. What equation, out of all these equations I've given you, Looks like it's the easiest way to get E0 cell crystals, Amora. What would you say? Yeah, look at all these equations we've got here. What's the easiest way to get E0 cell? Oh, yeah, that's true. So they have to, you have to do some math to get it the other ways. But the point is, where do you get these E0 cathode and E0 anode? From that table. From those tables, right? So that's why I would scribble in this answer first. E0 cell is E0 cathode plus E0 anode. That's, most, that's definitely the easiest way to get the potential of a cell. So that's kind of easy to get. So I'm pretty sure that's what the homework is going to do. They're going to give you a couple half reactions, and you calculate E0 cell. But how do you get the little n, Daisy? How do you get the little n? And has to do with electrons. So the moles of electrons. How do we get the E0 cell? Right? Remember, aren't you going to set something up like this? You get so many volts here, so many volts here. Add them up, and that's your E0 cell. Remember doing this? OK, what cancels when you're doing this? Something has to cancel out on you, Sabina, for you to work this out. Do you remember? What's canceling out? The electrons, right? Let's say if we had two electrons here and three electrons over there, then what do we have to do, Jasmine, before we could add these things up? Those are our two half reactions. Perfect. Top one times three, bottom one times two. OK, then we have how many electrons canceling? Six. OK. So you hesitate to guess what the little n is going to be then? Little n is going to be? Six. Six, because it's the number of electrons that are reacting. right? The number of electrons that are being given up, and then the amount of number of moles of reactions that are, number of moles of electrons that are reacting. Okay? They're just being exchanged. So n in that case would be six. It's just the number of moles of electrons that are canceling. Okay, So I give you this equation. You have to know how to rearrange it and solve for k. So Tegan, what would be the very last step if you're going to use that expression? What would be the very last step mathematically to get k? What would be the very last step you'd have to do? Yeah, raise both sides, but not to little e, though. It would be if it was ln k. It's a different base. 10. So the very last step would be raise both sides to the 10, because then it would look like 10 to the log k. Right? Those guys are inverse. That just ends up being k. OK. 
So what we need to do is rearrange so that we get it in terms of just log k. So Crystal Munoz, how would you rearrange this so you just get equals log k? What would you do? Bring the end to the top, good. Then what? Perfect. Now we have to raise both sides to the 10 power. So you end up with what? 10 to the e0 cell times n all over 0 0.0592 would be my k. So you have to know how to do that. I'm just giving you the top equation. You have to know how to manipulate it. Does that make sense, Danny? So here's the rest of our electrochemical equations. We've, we've messed with all of these, but they're all in one spot here. Alyssa, all spontaneous or naturally occurring cell reactions have E0 cell values that are there's one expression up there that is supposed to tell you. It's this one. Because the only thing we know is something is spontaneous if what is negative? Delta G. Delta G. This thing has to be negative. Okay. Well, we've got a minus sign. What's N? Is N, can N ever be negative? No, N's just the electrons that cancel when you add up those half reactions. So N, N can't really be negative, so that's got to be positive. How about F? That's positive, that 96,000 number. So if I want to get a negative number for delta G, E0 had better be, if it's negative, oh, negative times a negative. It has to be positive. So positive. And we already answered what equation is probably the easiest way to get E0 cell. Remember, this is what, just what reads on the voltmeter, right? How do you get value to substitute into this equation? Erica, how do we calculate E0 cell? How do we get these numbers? E0 cathode, E0 anode? Where do we get them? Tables. I think any time you see a little superscript zero, the answer is always tables. It's standard conditions. That's why we have chemistry with D.R. Smith, so you can scroll back yourself. <laughs> the, more, the, more blank value, the more blank the values of E0 cathode and E0 anode <laughs> is what? This is key. The more blank the values of E0 cathode, E0 anode, and E0 cell are, the more spontaneous and aggressive the half reaction is going to be. The more what? Positive, right? Because the more positive it is, the bigger that delta G is going to be negative. So that's why I can't scroll it, Crystal, because I would screw up my whole point here, right? <laughs> The more positive these numbers are, man, the more aggressive the reaction is, the more spontaneous it's going to be. Right? The bigger the equilibrium constant, everything's going to be more favored. So since that's the case, that's why there's so much chemistry in these tables. Right? If we take all these compounds in this table and just mix them in the same tub, some are going to be, a lot of these reactions are going to occur before other reactions will occur. They'll be much more aggressive, much more violent in comparison to the other ones. So in any table of standard reduction potentials, reactants are always being, Gabby, like this is a table, standard reduction potentials. The reactants are always being what? Reduced. If you're not sure, you just look, right? Just pick one out. Pick any one of them out. That's easy, especially, right? Like here, you have plus 2 going to plus, definitely reduced. So the reactants, Vivian, are always what agents? They're always 
oxidizing agents. So you do this. Circle the best oxidizing agent in this table and put a box around the best reducing agent. If you don't like the word best, you could just say strongest. It's the same thing. Circle the strongest oxidizing agent. Place a box around the strongest reducing agent. So Monica, what did you circle? Oxidizing agents get what? Oxidizing agents get reduced. So if you're going to pick something by random, you better pick something that's on the reactant or product side. Reactant. OK. So you have to pick one of these compounds. What's the trick to doing it? Pick the one that's the most positive. So your only choice is what compound? Yeah? Which compound then? Which compound? Has to be a reactant on the reactant side. There's only one of them. Has to be <laughs> iodine, solid, right? Right. It has to be iodine, solid. How would would you draw a box around then? What is the best? What's the strongest reducing agent? Reducing agents, Diana, get oxidized, so we better pick a product. It'd be the last one, because if we talk about this, remember they don't, it'd be nice if they did, made a whole other table of oxidation potentials. All they would do is flip all these reactions, change all the signs, but it's kind of redundant. So you have to do it yourself. So the most positive oxidation reaction is that chromium. It likes to be a positive 0.75. Order the following oxidizing agents by increasing strengths under standard state conditions. So that means you can use a table. Incre order them in order of increasing oxidizing strength. Is this the game you're playing? Are you putting the, the numbers below them? So oxygen, I put a positive 0.4. Cadmium, a negative 0.4. I'm just looking up their reduction potential, right? Because ox oxidizing agents get reduced, so I don't have to flip anything. Did you notice that there's two sulfates, though? There's a sulfate here, and there's a sulfate here. The acidic solution means there's a lot of what? A lot of H pluses. We're supposed to pick the one with a lot of H pluses. So that would be 0.2. So if you want to list them in order of increasing strength, who would be first? weakest one would be first, which would be cadmium. And then everybody you'd list sulfate and then oxygen. So here they the next question, they don't want you to list them. Just tell. Identify. What's the what is the strongest reducing agent out of those three? What is the weakest? reducing agent out of those three.
reducing agents get oxidized. So which one's the strongest, Jerixa? Oh, did you flip your signs, though? Yeah. The strongest reducing agent will be, right, the one with the, the most positive, most positive oxidation potential. Remember, you had to flip them, because now we're looking at opposite reactions. And the weakest would be? Right, the most negative, yeah, Cu plus. So strongest, so strongest, weakest. So what? One thing to get out of this is iron is a very strong reducing agent, very strong. So that's and a lot of things are made of iron. Therefore, iron rusts, right? Iron rusts because of the half reaction marked with an arrow. There it is. And which other half-reaction, Danielle? What other half-reaction is involved with rust? So here's one of them. And the other one is it has to involve iron. We don't even have iron in that one. You see it? Yeah, that Fe2 plus plus two electrons goes to Fe solid. Okay, but we have to flip that one, right? Or not. You see how this is working? If you identify the two half reactions, you have to flip one of them to get the electrons to cancel. How do you determine which one to flip? How do you determine which one to flip? You want E0 cell to be super what? Positive. So you flip the one. Either you've got to flip the cathode or the anode. You flip the one that's the most negative. Flip the one that's the most negative. So we pick these two half reactions. Which one are you going to flip? The Fe one. So if you wanted E0 cell, you'd say positive 0.4 plus positive 0.44. I mean, if it asked that, but the point is, is it didn't. But that's the game you're playing, is you want to get the most positive E0 cell. So the question is, using this table of standard reduction potentials, select a cheap metal to use as a sacrificial anode, which will electrochemically react much more intensely than iron, and therefore protect the iron surface from rusting. And actually slap it onto the boat, right, just like they did here. You can see, and they slapped it on. So we got to pick these metals, right? Do we want to go up from iron or down from iron? You want to go down from iron. Why? So it'll be more positive. Because if you go up from iron, and slap on some cadmium or some lead, iron's going to react first because iron's more positive. So you're not going to do any good. Okay. So your choices would be chromium solid. Did you hear about chromium? It's not the healthiest thing. And it's, it's nice and shiny and purry, but it's expensive. And zinc is the way to go. Zinc is everywhere. So zinc solid is, is what they're putting on all this stuff. In fact, it's so cheap, you just put it on screws even, right? And since 2011, these screws have been, or the, these nails have been in water, right? One obviously not zinc coated, the other one zinc coated. So go through the work of putting up a fence, and make sure you use zinc coated stuff. What is the standard cell potential 
you would obtain from a cell at 25 degrees using an electrode in which an iodide solution is in, talk, is in contact with iodine solid and an electrode in which a chromium strip dips, dips into a solution of chromium plus 3. So they're not forcing the reaction. They want the most spontaneous reaction. You have to identify the cathode and the anode, right, and flip the one that's the most negative to identify your overall reaction. So they want, they want to know what is the standard cell potential. Well, they don't, they don't even really care what their reaction is. But. Right, you First identify them. Where's, oh, here's iodine, right? Where's my chromium half reaction? Oh, at the very bottom. OK. So when you're looking at these half reactions, do you have all this stuff? Do you have iodine solid? Do you have iodide? There's no iodide. There's no I minus present. Oh yeah, there is. Is there any Cr plus three present? Yep. And chromium solid. Yeah. So all those things are there. So this is gonna work. But which reaction do you flip? Because right, you can't add up these two, the electrons aren't going to cancel. Flip the. Remember, you want the most positive, so flip the chromium. Because if you don't, you're not going to get an overall negative. So flip this one. So, and all it's asking for is cell potential. It's not even asking for the reaction. So you can just say E cell is going to be a positive 0.53 volts, and then flip that one, plus positive 0.74 volts. And if you want the overall reaction, you could you know, add them up, but they didn't want that. So why mess with it? What do you get? 1.27. Thank you. OK. What is the delta G0? What is the standard change in Gibbs free energy for the following reaction? Now they're not giving you a choice. You have to use I minus as a reactant, I2 solid as a product. So when you start identifying these half reactions, I minus has to be going to I2. Right? Otherwise, when you add things up, you're not going to get that, this reaction. But in the first place, what equation are we supposed to use? That, yeah, that delta G0 is minus N F E0 cell. Yep. That's what you got to use. So give it a shot. All you need is that, well, that F, that 96,500 and 85 or something, right? E0 cell, add up your half reactions, and figure out the moles of electrons that are canceling when you add up those half reactions to get that reaction they want. So you may not even get the most positive E0 cell. You're forced to get that overall reaction.
Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't. But we really don't. Yeah. I need that there. Thank you. What is that? Point eight something volts? Point eight three? So what'd you get as your little N? N should be how many electrons are canceling? Well, two. Two are, right? Two are canceling, so my little n's going to be two. So the number of electrons that cancel is really. And then my E0 cell is my 0.83. So we should be good to go with them. Sixty kilojoules. So in kilojoules, negative one sixty. So in joules, that's got to be like ten to the fifth. So it's always going to be electron canceled. Yes, always. Negative one point six times ten to the. Yep. Whenever you're finding n. One more. You can call it a day. Find the equilibrium constant.
So you're getting a negative volts for E0 cell? Good. Because you're forced to. You have to get whatever reaction they want. So this isn't trying to predict the most spontaneous reaction. This is trying to calculate an equilibrium constant for a specified reaction. With a negative E0 cell, should you expect a really big or a really small K? Really small. So you should get a really small answer for this. Really? That is really small. 4.7 times 10 to the negative 25th. So she had to. Did anybody else get that? Okay, good. You had to take 0.72 times 2, divide it by 0.0592, whatever you get, raise it to the 10 power. 